Kaddish Baruch Hu, they try to make you look bad because they do so much corruption. It looks like you're allowing the injustice to happen and you don't care. It's obviously not the answer. The answer is you care. That's why you let the injustice continue because in the end you have to decide who's righteous and who's wicked. And you know, but it's for us to know so that we have no claim against you. You understand? That's why Hashem lets it all play out, yo. With free will to do whatever you want, yo. On the right side, it's a rabbi calling you to come into the base measures to work on your nishama and to increase your holiness. And on the left side, it's a prostitute calling you into a strip club to have a good time, yo. She's offering you ecstasy and molly. He's offering you eternal life, yo. You don't see how fake this world is, yo. Let's just put everything on a scale of Kaddish Baruch and weigh it out, yo. The wicked get away with being wicked because it's a test. See, if everybody saw that the wicked right away got destroyed, murdered, maimed, and crippled, nobody would be wicked, do you understand? So that's why Hashem has to do it like that. So please don't judge God, yo. And if you're gonna judge God, God forbid a billion times, judge Him favorably. Because he always comes through at the end. And because everything attached to him is for the good. Even when he created the Satan and created hell, even that is for the good. And that's crazy. That should show you how good he is. Because even there you get cleansed of your sins. It's good for you. The righteous see you suffer. It's good for you. And it's good for the righteous. Why do you think Hashem shows the righteous in the end the wicked suffering? Because he wants them to see the justice. And if there was one righteous person that came and said, Oh, no, no, I don't need to see it. I don't need to see it. <laughs> Out there, you'll tell me that it's a dig, bro. They might give you a backhand to let you know, stop with your nonsense, yo. If I said, like one guy told me, I don't want a reward. I don't need the reward. I said, good, so give it to me. Here, I'll write down on a piece of paper that all the reward for everything you do will go to me. Sign it. He's about to sign it. Clown. Why are you signing it, bro? I told him, are you crazy? I don't want your reward. Take your reward, yo. I said, God is going to hand you a reward and you're going to not accept it. That alone would be disrespectful. That alone would be disrespectful. You would hurt his feelings, yo. Obviously, you couldn't even hurt his feelings because he's too perfect. But you get the point to say it in layman's terms so you can connect to it. Let me explain something to you. The world got so corrupt that there's no truth, no justice, and no peace. Even if you look... At these people that come with the leaf blowers, bro. Eight o'clock in the morning. They have these like nuclear leaf blowers, bro. The leaf blower is bigger than the guy that's holding it, bro. I'm not even playing with you. And they do it with all these buildings so it echoes. And they do it on nothing. There's not even a leaf there. It's, we're, we're still like towards the end. Like I think it's the first day of spring. There's not even leaves anywhere, bro. Come on, man. Come on, bro. They just do it to make noise, yo. They could just do it with a rake or even with a broom. It's such a joke, yo. Guys with the modified mufflers, they come revving. One guy came by my neighborhood the other day. I whistled from my window just to let him know. It's like midnight. Yo, I whistled to this guy like, Shh, just to let him know. Like, yo, what do you think he did? He stopped at the corner and just started revving it, making more noise. You understand? This is what you call arrogant, wicked, and rude. And you know what the end of these people are? Look at the end of Korach, bro. He was somebody that was very knowledgeable in Torah, yo. Very smart, very wealthy. Could have influenced a lot of Jews to be great, yo. But the envy destroyed him. He got jealous because El Tzafan got his position and thought it was taken from him. So he got mad at Moshe Rabbeinu. Started to question him and attack him, you understand? And he got arrogant because Hashem let him get away with it. One attack, two attack. Another time he tried to embarrass him. That Tan and Avira. <laughs> Moshe Rabbeinu called you and you refused to come. And Moshe Rabbeinu went to you and you dissed him. And in the end you got swallowed up alive. Yo, you and your infant kids. You think Hashem is afraid to kill children? He's not, yo. He's not. First of all, that child that you see dying was a child from his last life that was destined to come to the world for this amount of a lot of time to die. So you should understand that. And for this kid, it's good that he died. Why? Because now he got cleansed and goes to heaven, yo. I have an aunt who lost the baby at three years old. Really, may she rest in peace. And I want to dedicate this video to her, yo. I'm not even playing with you. Met her when I was a kid, yo. She was the same age as me, my cousin, first cousin. They left the, the gate unlocked, yo. 
when she got in and fell in the pool and died. Can only imagine, yo, when her parents found her laying dead in the pool. Ah, so scary, yo. I was a little kid, I was three years old, so I don't remember her funeral or nothing. But if you take Riri, so adorable and cute, yo. You take her, and you know she's in heaven right now. So the mom, you know, 20, 30 years depressed. She, she's like, you can see, broken, yo. The spirit is broken, and it's sad to see it like that. Why? I tell you why. Because that is a blessing in disguise, yo. You don't see that she had to come to the world for just three years, die, and go get her share in heaven. If you saw Riri in heaven right now, and you were her mom, and you saw her draped in diamonds and pearls and being served and by a river with 800 different variety of roses and gold vine studded diamonds from her canopy and angels at every side, 60 of them beckoning to her every call. And you saw her living like a queen beyond the queen, yo. Would you be sad? No, you praise God even more. I know it's crazy, you see a baby, God forbid, gets blown up in a terrorist attack, yo, that's horrible, horrific, and you should get hurt because you had a connection to that baby, but Hashem says after a year, really after seven days, 30 days, that's it, after 30 days, the mourning is over, bro, that's it, yes, for a year, you say Kadiz because they are being judged for the year, yes, but really after 30 days, that's it, now if you, it says, the Gemara says that if you mourn for the dead, more than they're supposed to be mourned for you can mourn even more like Hashem will take somebody else y'all that's very very scary and there was a a lady it happened to in the Gemara I don't remember her name or the exact details of the story so I won't say it obviously because I don't know it <laughs> and I like to admit I don't know but if I really searched I might know a little let me see if I could search for that story so she was saying okay so somebody died and she kept saying, take my other kid, and then her other kid died. Yeah, like in her, that's what I think it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. In her sorrow, she kept saying, so fine, take another one. And they did, and did, and did, and then finally, that's it, yo. And then I think, that's what, that's how they got her out of it. They came to her, they said, you're going to keep doing this, your kids are going to keep dying, yo, stop. But nothing worked, so one Rav took her, you know what he said to her? Are you more merciful than God? He's telling you to mourn for 30 days. And here you are mourning for 30 years. Are you more merciful? No, so she said, no, that I'm not. So he said, good. So stop mourning, yo. Move on with your life. Now, why would Hashem do that? I don't know. It sounds vicious that he's going to, just because you said, oh, take another one, he's going to kill another kid. You see, the answer is yes. So obviously Hashem had it set up like that. Like he already knew that you were going to do that. And he already gave you a kid that was predestined to die. And he, yo, the way, yo, this is what I mean. You know, you say checkers, chess, he's playing a whole nother game, yo. So many steps ahead, you can never understand, yo. That's why it says you better fulfill your oath. They said that Rachel died because Yaakov made an oath and he didn't fulfill it during the time he was supposed to. Very scary. I already told you about what happened to King Zedekiah. Lost 10 of his children because he didn't keep an oath. Yo, yo. Don't think the world is really understanding how nuts it is. You know, I wanted to name my first kid Avia, a girl. And then I saw that one of the kings of Israel, the son of Yerovam, his name was Avia, and he was wicked. So let me tell you what Avia did that was so amazing. So his father built a calf idol and made the people come there to worship instead of going to Shalim. Can you imagine he was stopping people from making the pilgrimage to Shalayim to go to the Beit HaMikdash? That is scary, yo. Think about it for a second. So his son allowed them to go. He would set up armed guards and not let anybody go. Where? In Dan and Beit El. Beit El, the house of God, yo. Oh, I couldn't believe it, yo. I'm going to talk about this. It's so dope. Look. See, all these corrupt people, you look at like the Fannie Willis case, right? What makes it, forget about the arrogance. Is arrogance fine? You can be arrogant, smug. You're going to get, you'll eat mud if you're smug. I'm being real with you, bro. He did it to Nebuchadnezzar. He'll do it to you. Don't worry, bro. But it's not only that. It's that they talk about God. You see her in the church. And she said, Ben El, the house of God, could not believe it. I was like, this girl is talking about Hashem in the Torah like that? Yo, get out of church. 
It's a fake world, bro. That's why they say Allah Akbar as they chop the head of a kid. You're not getting it, yo. Fake. All fake. They pretend like they so love God, yo. You love God, you would chop your own head before you did that. Word up. That should be their punishment. You should chop their own head while getting eaten by a Komodo dragon plus more, yo. You don't understand, yo. Sometimes I curse the wicked, yo. And then, like, the Satan comes to me. So, oh, you're not allowed to do it. And I said, why? When it's life and death, it's a Yotzeb and a cloud. You're right. Don't ever curse anybody to die. I agree with you a billion times. But in a situation like this, where they're making the world so corrupt that we're going to end up suffering, that an illegal immigrant could come to this country and murder a citizen of this country, that's life and death, bro. I'm not telling you to go around cursing anybody because when you curse somebody, you get upset. But if you could curse them with a calmness and say, God, please destroy them to save the world and smile while you're doing it, do it. You'll get rewarded for that. You know why? I'll show it to you. And you're going to tell me, no, no, you're not allowed. So I'll tell you like this. Look, if you curse a wicked person to die, and I'm talking about life and death, not somebody that you got into an argument with in your building or he took your parking spot or none of this garbage, yo. Or you got into a fight about money, none of that. Hashem will make you come back as a Siamese twin, bro. Don't even play with any of this hate in your heart, yo. But I'm telling you, yo, if you see somebody wicked, and arrogant, and that's what it is. It's not just wicked, bro. It's wicked and arrogant. That's when you know it's a wrap for them. And you know what the craziest thing is? You don't even have to curse them, yo. You don't even have to curse them to die, yo. Not even close. Hashem is already doing it. So why are they not dying? Because I already told you it's all a test. He's going to let this clown get away with his lies for another 20 years. And then he'll bury him deep. Look, 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 let me show you, yo. I'm not even going to mention her name, yo, but just so you get a good idea of how this world works. There was a lady on the radio, yo. She used to make fun of people all the time, embarrass them, talk bad about them, ruin their reputation, gossip, this, that, and did it in an arrogant way, yo. Now she's dying with dementia. She looks disgusting, decrepit, gross. People don't even want to go near her. Why? Because now Hashem is giving her what she deserves, yo. And you know what the craziest thing about that is? Is that she's getting cleansed of her sins, yo. So she actually might go to heaven. That is what's crazy. But we have to see how many victims does she have, yo. Because it might be just the beginning of the punishment. She rots away and then she goes to hell. So only Hashem knows the calculation of that. That's way beyond anybody's pay grade, you know what I mean? Nobody would know. Not even the angels know. That's what I love about this one guy was in the sixth section of hell. And he went up to the angel over there, the guard. He said, how much longer do I have? So the angel looked at him laughing. I don't even know. Over here, nobody knows, bro. Only God knows. And that's right before you get to the seventh. The seventh, they say, can be for eternal hell. Like Hitler, you know. Eternal forever. Ever and ever and ever. And ever. Oh, yo, 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 yo. yo. And you can ask me, how is it forever if people die? You know how? Because it's not in this world. In this world, there's an expiration date on everything. Except for your intelligence and your deeds. Remember that, yo. Your intelligence and your deeds. That will last forever, yo. And you know what else lasts forever? Heaven and earth. That's why Moshe Rabbeinu called upon them to testify against the world. Why? Because they're never going to die, yo. Let me tell you something, man. I used to think that in the time of Mashiach, there would be no births or anything like that because all the Nishamot came, had their tests, this and that. That might not necessarily be true because I remember I read in one of the Gemarot that there was a lady that gave birth and while her coffee was still warm. So it was like she went into a room, gave birth, came back out, and was with the baby. Like crazy stuff like that. So I was thinking, how could that be? If there's a, because they tell you, yo, you can't do tshuva. Mashiach already came. That's it. All the neshamot are getting judged and this and that. But who knows the calculations of God, yo? There could be an opinion that in the next world you can have kids, yo. That's deep. Maybe all the people that didn't have kids in this world and suffered, Hashem will give them children in the next world. And the next world is this world. So deep, so deep. Don't you get it, yo? The end game is you're going to be like the Jews in the desert, yo. Not the ones that died, yo. 
the ones that were blessed, and those were the ones that died. Look at how Hashem is so beautiful, yo. Look what He did for them, yo. He, yo, man, He clothed them with the clouds of glory. Beautiful. He fed them with the food of the angels, the man, like a fried coriander seed with honey, yo. That's so dope. You ever smell coriander, how delicious it smells, yo? And they didn't have to go to the bathroom, none of that, yo. Because it was spiritual food. Hashem sustained them, He took care of them, yo. They became like angels, and that's the end game. It'll take a thousand years, but it will happen, yo. Yo, if you're listening to this video, man, let me tell you the purpose of life. The purpose of your life is to get to heaven. And someone's gonna tell you the Satan's gonna pop up and tell you, you see, you're only doing it for the reward. And you tell them, no, I'm doing it for God. But this is a byproduct of my work. Hashem is so giving that even though He created me and everything I do is to pay Him back for that, He'll still add to it by giving me a reward. You know why He gives rewards? Because it motivates. I've seen that firsthand. I've seen that firsthand, yo. There was a class I had that was misbehaving so bad in this new school that I went to. I could see like the kids were running the school. So I seen like, yo, the faculty didn't even have my back, yo. I had to do everything by myself. But you know what I did? I started buying the kids prizes, yo. <laughs> and right away, they started behaving, yo. Also, you have to have a connection with them. I will say that, yo. If they look up to you and they think you're like a nice guy and you really care for them. See, that's one thing about the kids I love, yo. They're so pure, so honest. I love that about them, yo. That's why they get so upset if they think somebody's lying, yo. They go crazy. Why? Because they can't tolerate the injustice, yo. I love it. And I love protecting kids, yo, from bullies. Like I told this one kid, yo, the school lets you get away with being a bully. And I can't bully you because I'm your teacher, yo. But I'm telling you, God is watching. And he's going to send a bully to bully to bully. So this kid said to me, oh, he's going to send a bully to bully a bully. So I'm making fun of the kids were laughing. I said, yeah, laugh now. Cry later. And how did I know those words would be so prophetic? Are you crazy? Some girl came to our school from public school, yo. That was a horror show, yo. Unruly is not even the word to describe this girl, yo. I've never seen a girl like that in my life, yo. I remember I came to school. They put her in my class. They don't even tell you, yo. They just let this girl come in. I don't even know who she is. I walk in. She's sitting on the desk Indian style. And all the other kids are in shock. Like, they could not believe she has the guts to sit like that. So I walk in. I'm like, who is you? <laughs> I go, who are you, yo? She goes, oh, my name is whatever. And I said, can you please, like, sit like everybody else? So she goes, no, this is how I sit. Take it or leave it. So you know what I said? I said, I'll take it. No problem. So, because I knew not to go to war with her. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got to meet her and see who she is. And give her a nice musar talk to soften her up, yo. So the craziest thing was I was like, I'll take it, no problem. I just do me a favor tomorrow. And as I was saying that, this kid gets up and goes, shut up and sit down already. Nobody has time for your garbage. Something like that he said to her, yo, this girl got up, took a full water bottle and threw it at his head so hard. Now it's in plastic, yo. Maybe the cap wasn't on tight like it should be, but yo, the whole thing exploded. He got all wet, and I looked at his face, and everyone was in shock. It would happen within a nanosecond, yo. And I'll never forget, I looked at his face, and I saw the fear of God in his eyes, yo. He could, this bully could not believe that she had the guts to do that, yo. So from that day, I knew that was the bully that God sent to bully the bully. So then I'll never forget, like a couple of weeks later, she found out who he liked, like one of the girls in the school he had a crush on. So she started to tease him in public about it, like at lunch, yo. So he came to me, coach, coach, please, please, make it stop, make it stop. So I said, you want to make it stop? I can't make it stop. Only Hashem can make it stop. How? I said, stop bullying the girl you bully. You don't get it. I told you this three weeks ago. God is going to send the bully to bully. You keep bullying this girl. And now God sent this girl to bully you. He goes, so what do I do? I said, go to the girl that you bully and ask for forgiveness. And I promise you, she'll forgive you. If you do it from the heart, it will penetrate her heart, yo. So he did. And everything worked out. You know what I mean? That's the, 
kind of things that happened to me when I was teaching with kids, yo. Yo, hopefully I'll get that back, yo. Yo, a couple of schools like this me, yo. You don't even know, yo. I'm not even going to talk about it, bro. You know what time it is with me, yo. I keep my business to myself, yo. Not even worth reliving your hell. What a trick of the Satan. You're going to start thinking of how they dissed you, all the rotten things they did, how they played with this, how they twisted this, how they put the teachers in a situation that was a compromising situation. It was their fault, but they blamed the teachers. Yo, the things that... No. Stop. Immediately. It's a trick from the Satan. You know how I know? Because you're going to start talking about it and you're going to get frustrated. That's how I know. And God wants you to get frustrated? No, He wants you to be calm. God wants you to be angry? No, He wants you to be serene at heart. So what are you telling me, yo? It's worth it to relive your hell? It's not. Don't do it. When a wicked person walks away from you, he just did you a favor. Don't run after the atheist trying to prove them God is great. He don't care, bro. He don't care. He doesn't even believe in God. So you're wasting your time, yo. You want to lose your wisdom? Go debate an atheist. For real. <laughs> You'll come out of that conversation less wise, yo. There's nothing as bad as a bad woman. Man. <laughs> yo, you don't know, yo. You don't understand, yo. King Solomon will break it down to you better than anybody can, yo. I'll tell you another way to get peace in your life. Stay away from politics, bro. Nothing dirtier in the universe, yo. Well, maybe that's not true, but it's as dirty as anything you can bring. That I can guarantee you. It might not be dirtier, but it's as dirty <laughs> as an immodest woman. Different, but just as dirty. It's evil and wicked. And I'm going to show you. You know why? Because it's all lies, yo. If God's name is the truth, that's one of his names, the truth. Peace is another name, yo. Because he loves peace, yo. And over there, there's no peace. You know why? Because lying creates chaos. That's why. Look at these guys. I'm not even going to mention names, but there's one of them over there, yo. One of these Democrats. He is so smug. And yesterday at this hearing, when he was like, show us one shred of evidence. Bring Joe Biden. Bring up an impeachment right now. Here, I'll call the order. I'll do it right now. And you think they would do it, yo. I would have called his bluff and made him quiet in a second. Never, Chasma Khalila, would even be around that environment, yo. Woe to the wicked and woe to his neighbor. Get out of that building, bro. Yo, yo, yo. They show all this proof that Joe Biden is a crook, yo. Text messages, phone calls, people that are coming to testify. And all the Democrats, too, is trying to make it look like it's all a lie when they know it's not, yo. Yo, I've never seen anything so dirty in my life. Like they were saying about Trump. How could he hate immigrants? His own parents were immigrants. His wife is an immigrant. His mother's an immigrant. His mother loves an immigrant. You would think he would love immigrants. You clowns. Of course he loves immigrants. But he doesn't love illegal immigrants. You see, they leave out the word illegal. And now the whole picture changes. You understand? This is how they fool you, yo. They so dirty, yo. Playing with words. Unbelievable, bro. The snake, I told you, this is what the snake did. The snake took words, played with them to ruin the reputation of a Kaddish Baruch. Hashem chopped his legs, chopped his arms, and chopped his tongue, yo. He used to be able to talk and speak. You understand? Now he has a tongue that he could just, and it's so gangster. Hashem does it, yo, with the wind. I don't even know. Look at how deep God goes. Look at the greatness of God, like what he does with the snake. The snake takes his tongue, puts it like inside, I don't know, of his nose, like in these receptors, and like it sends a message. <laughs> what kind of prey it is, how far it is. Yo, yo, come on, man. Get out of here with this. It's so deep. So look what he did to the snake. Not only that, chop this, chop that. Made him eat dust for eternity. Even when Mashiach comes, he's going to be eating dust. They're not getting it, yo. Who knows if he's even going to be around. Maybe it's just letting you know that if he was, he would have eaten dust, yo. Why? Because he played with words. Why? Because he lied, yo. When you lie, you destroy the world. You destroy justice. You destroy everything. You know what that's like? That's like if Hashem built a house and you came with a bulldozer and knocked it over, yo. Just like that. I'm not even playing, yo. But you're doing it to the world, yo. 
You're doing it to where people are suffering. Like you're telling people it's not a crisis at the border three years ago when you knew it was. You're telling people the Republicans didn't sign the bill. What side of the bill? Joe Biden today can do something and fix it in a second, yo. Executive order, just like he reversed everything Trump did, he can reverse it back, yo. Get out of here with this. But you never hear a Republican saying it, yo. It's unbelievable. It's like the Republicans are controlled opposition of the Democrats, yo. It's like they work together to destroy America, yo. It's so scary and so sad. Think about it. Yesterday in the hearing, they said, show us one shred of evidence. And this dude, Comer, sat there. He didn't even say a word. I don't even understand. Just say. We have text messages. We have this. Go give a whole speech. They say nothing, yo. Maybe that's a trap from Hashem. Hashem makes the Democrats feel even stronger with their argument to embarrass them more. Love you, Hashem, for giving me that. I believe in my heart, yo, that like James Comer and Jim Jordan like want the best for the American people. I'm not saying no. I could see that. But there's something not right, yo. There's something that's so off, yo. But like I said, maybe that's Hashem setting the trap, yo. Jared Moskowitz, yo. You want to talk about a smoke Jew? God, 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 help this kid before you destroy him forever, yo. I already told you what's the end of the snake, yo. Evil, wicked, and dirty, yo. And you playing with people's lives, yo. You're going to tell people there's no crisis at the border? Every Democrat that did not come out, that's none of them, that never came out and said, yo, this is horrific. Maybe there was a couple, and God should bless them for their honesty and their candor, but most of them, you know how they do. They insulate the lies, yo. <laughs> so you can't penetrate their lie. They just hit you with another lie, another lie. It's like you have truth. <laughs> was a stone and then you have the lies were another stones and then all these lies cover the truth you can't even find the truth yo the truth is insulated with lies yo it's very sick and demented yo but Hashem is watching all of this yo see if I was in politics bro they give me five minutes to talk over there in Congress I'm just telling the Democrats or any Republican I feel is not real <laughs> what their end is gonna be yo and that's the end of that yo I'm going to tell them about that time in Aviram, Nebuchadnezzar, Sancharib. Tell them about liars, about deceivers, people that came and tried to twist the truth and destroy lives, yo. And that's what they do, yo. I love you so much, Akadosh Baruch and I know in the end you're going to make justice, yo. That's why I don't go protest, yell, and scream. None of this garbage. All tricks from the Satan, yo. Protest? It looks so nice. You go with a flag. You protest this, that. But you're closing the highway and people can't go to work, bro. You're going to get punished for that, yo. That's how you know it's rooted in the Satan, yo. Because it's attached to something bad. Anything good attached to something bad is a problem. You understand what I'm telling you? Get rid of it, yo. Keep it clean. Like your soul. Watch your eyes, bro. All day I'll tell you to watch your eyes, yo. It's so important, yo. I wish I would have known when I was a kid how important it was. And I sullied my soul. You know, you have to start looking at yourself like a soul. Not like a physical human being, no. When you look at yourself, when you look at your face, picture a soul. I'm telling you, I'm giving you such great advice, yo. Everything you do should be for the soul. You should be obsessed with your soul. I like that. I cut this bar out. Oh, that's so dope. I might name this video that. Be obsessed with your soul. Oh, that's so dope. I cut this bar out. Oh. That means you'll never lie because you know that will mess up your soul. You'll never look at an immodest girl, yo, ever. Why? Because it will damage your soul. You wouldn't even look at the face of an angry person. Why? Because it will damage your soul. Any gossip, stay away from wicked people, misery loves company, provocateurs, contrarians, argumentative people, negative people, people always looking for a problem, no a few of those. <laughs> and I'm not afraid to block you on my phone, bro. Not at all. You're not even going to make me feel guilty, yo. I'll tell you, it's for my mental health. My soul comes before your soul. That's what I'm telling you, yo. I'm not sitting here to trying to be your tell me that said, oh, no, no. I put your soul before my soul. No, no. no. You should know that, yo. Be obsessed with your soul, yo.
anything negative stay away from because it will damage your soul and the craziest thing is you won't see it you won't see it bro it won't come to fruition that sin the punishment for that sin might not come to fruition till 12 years from now yo but i told you mashiach is coming soon bro and it's very possible that the mashiach could be coming soon yo so the time might be short so if you're wicked don't think he's gonna give you 50 60 years like he used to he might not I don't want to say I have the time because he's the master of time, but there might not be enough time for you. So we'll have to shorten it and it can be like seven years instead of 60 years. You understand? <laughs> yo, yo, a warning to the wicked, yo. Be careful, bro. Komodo dragon eats water buffalo. Just go YouTube that, yo. And I think that'll be enough to... Straighten the whole world out And even not Somebody will get up and say I'm not afraid <laughs> Don't be afraid yo I told you bro You could be the strongest dude in the world yo Get on top of a mountain And announce to the whole world How you're the strongest No one will And everyone's shaking yo Because they're scared of you yo And Hashem will give you such a stomach ache right there yo You'll choke on your own spit And die Like that on top of the mountain while you're telling us how strong you are, yo. You're not getting it, yo. You're not getting it. And you're going to escape the day of your death. You're not. Your own feet are going to walk you to that day. What do you think? It reminds me of the story I heard that was a little bit like, yo. <laughs> this is nuts. There was a girl. She kept having a dream. Her mother kept telling her to go meet her on this corner. And it just came to her again in the morning. And then, you know, another time. And she realized that... Like, this is real. And her mother's like, go there. Five o'clock Thursday. Please, please, you have to go there for me. So she went. And the minute she got to that corner, she got hit by a car and died, yo. Wow, that's deep, yo. I'll tell you another story. There was a uh, bus driver. He was driving a bus. And a little girl jumped in front of the bus, hit her, and she died. And the mother was sitting in the first row of the bus. So he looked at her because he realized from everybody coming up to her that she was the mom. So he went to her and he asked for forgiveness. No, oh, you saw it wasn't my fault. So she, she was a religious lady. So she looked at this guy. He wasn't religious. So you know what she said to him? Just like you took a soul, now you have to return a soul. So he looked at her. How am I going to return a soul? She goes, return your soul. Work on your midot. Get closer to God, yo. Wow, that's dope. Can you imagine? Yo, I would marry that lady's daughter, yo. Like that, I'm telling you, yo. Yo, do we still have people like that in the world? The country's for a whole for sure we do. You know how I know? Because once in a while, I'll meet somebody, like, very rare, but it'll happen. You just see somebody with a light, yo. Like this one dude. Ended up dissing me Yo these people are so fake Yo your light shines bright I can't believe How these democrats lie yo It's scary to me yo It's scary They're literally possessed by a wicked evil spirit That wants to murder babies Yes yo They want abortions They're telling you If you don't want to have this kid And you made a mistake So you got busy with your boyfriend bro You made a mistake You got pregnant Fine Kill the baby, you good. That's what they're telling you. They're not going to tell it like that, yo. <laughs> show you how they play with the truth. I'll show you. Pro-life, pro-death, right? That's what it should be. Right? The opposite of life is death. Absolutely. Come on, man. Let's stop playing with words, bro. <laughs> pro-life, pro-choice. They're very slick with it, yo. Very slick with it, yo. They paint a picture that's not there, yo. <laughs> They see the truth and they falsify it, yo. I told you earlier with Donald Trump, he hates immigrants, he hates this. No, he hates illegal immigrants. And you know what he hates even more? Illegal immigrants that are illegal immigrants that came out of prisons, dumped by their leader to come flood our streets and commit crimes, yo. Yo, yo, man, you don't understand. TikTok, look what it's doing to the youth, yo. Look what it's doing to the youth. It's occupying their time with nonsense. Trying to feeding into their grandeur thoughts of fame and 
I don't know what they think, yo. Why you want fame so badly, bro? Fame is a curse. Fame will bring you pain. You understand? You want me to prove it to you? You have no peace. That's it. That's all you need to know, yo. When the public knows your business, you'll never have peace. There's always going to be people that are not going to like you. You're going to do something right away. They're going to criticize you. Not only that, the media is going to take you and make you look like something you're not. If you're not following their agenda, what's their agenda? You don't even want me to tell you what their agenda is, yo. It's dirty, yo. It's dirty. It's dirty, yo. Go look in the music industry, yo. Scary, yo, what they do to these people, yo. Sell their souls beyond, yo. Beyond. And then you look at them. They have no mental health. They're struggling. Very sad, yo. Very sad. You look at this guy. I don't want to mention his name, yo. One of these rappers, yo. How Hashem punishes this guy, yo. Yo, yo. I get, you know what this shame, yo. Yo. Come on, man. I can't even tell you they catch him in a hotel room with... I can't even say with what, yo. Because you couldn't comprehend, yo. <laughs> how, yo, today, look at the world, how fake it is. Guys or girls, yo. That's it. What else do you need to know? The guys, the drag queens, yo. God forbid that word even comes out of my mouth. I call this world the same mouth that I praise you with is going to say that name. And I only said it to teach the world how demented it is, yo. Yo, yo, yo. yo. Yo, yo, I can tell you a story, yo I'm gonna say it, yo I'll say it. I don't tell my business But I'll say one from the past, yo Just to let you know how sick This world is, yo I used to work In a store in the city, in the village, yo Some sneaker store So one of these dudes that I work with He was a model for Calvin Klein He used to come and work there on the side To make money So one night I went out with my boys To some club so back then, the clubs that were like really, really good had like, yo, these kind of people walking around. Yo, I'm not saying the name, yo, because it's disgusting. But they would be in the club. I'm just telling you just how dirty this is. This is the world I was living in. So dirty, bro. You just see them walking around, yo. But it's part of the club. I don't even know how to explain it, yo. But you see gorgeous girls there. You know, it's dope. You get drunk. You get this. You get that. Fire. All fake, fake, fake. Hevel, hevelim. A billion times, yo. What a fake, dirty world. Only bad things are going to come out of that place, yo. Trust me, yo. Where there's no God, evil things happen, yo. So, anyway, we're in this club. And we're leaving. And one of these people start yelling my name. Yo, yo, what's up, what's up? <laughs> so I'm like looking at this dude. It's a dude dressed as a girl, yo. And I'm like, I do not know anybody like that ever in my life. I never even spoke to somebody like that, yo. So I'm thinking to myself, yo, I don't even know what's going on. But they're yelling my name. So I'm telling my boy, I'm like, I don't even know this person. He's like, bro, she's yelling your name. She, it's a he. No, it's a she. Yo, I was like, yo, please. So this dude dressed as a girl runs up to me. And I'm like, yo, do I know you? And he goes, yeah, yeah, it's me. I don't remember Darnell. I forgot what his name was. I was like, who? He goes, it's me, Darnell, from the sneaker store. I was like, bro, are you crazy, yo? He's like, nah, nah, you know, on the weekends, me and my boys, we like to party and have fun. You know, it's just it's just for fun. I was like, you're bugging, bro. I was like, yo, don't ever. Cause I started to give him a speech. I wasn't even religious back then, yo. I wasn't even close to God back then. Gave him a speech, yo, you gotta cut that out, homie. That's disgusting. And my friends were like teasing me so bad, yo. You probably dated that dude. I was like, yo, you people are crazy, yo. He works with me at the sneaker store. They didn't believe me. Of course they believe me, but they were teasing me. You know how friends do. But just ah, such a sick story, yo. But that's exactly what it is, man. This is how sick this world is, yo. It's a fake world, yo. King Solomon said it best, yo. King Solomon said it best, yo. Heaven, heavenly, empty, reka. That's it. You're gonna come grab from this world? It's all reka. I'll tell you, you wanna hear this world so perfectly, yo? There was a fox and he stumbled upon an orchid, yo. But it was all fenced in and he couldn't get in. And there was like a little small hole, but he couldn't fit because he was like fat. So he started to starve himself for like three days and he went in. 
And he gorged and gorged and gorged and ate and ate for three days straight. And now it was time to leave, but he couldn't get out, yo. <laughs> so he had to sit there fast, lose all the weight, and then get out. So everything he ate, he lost. You understand? Everything. And he turned around and he looked at the vineyard, like almost ready to curse it, yo. Because he realized it was all fake. What did I gain? Nothing, yo. It felt like I had everything in my hand. But in the end, it all disappeared. That's this fake world, yo. You want the fame? It'll bring you shame, yo. So a town needed a rabbi. So they called the head rabbi and they said, yo, listen, we need a rabbi quick. Send us one of your students, your best one, one that could be our new rabbi. So he said, okay, I'll send you my best student. So he sends him. He goes there. They ask him three questions. He gets the three questions wrong. They send him back to the rabbi. He walks through the door. The rabbi looks at him and says, what's wrong? He said, rabbi, I don't even know, yo. They asked me three questions. I like blanked out. I, I couldn't answer him. He said, what were the three questions? And they were like really deep, difficult ones. One difficult, one not so difficult. What was about the paraduma? About uh, how many hairs? He said, two hairs. Uh, so they asked him about that. They asked him about uh, about the bread. Where do you break the bread when you say amotzi? You have to know about the dream with my masha to know that, yo. On the place that's cooked the most, yo. That's so deep, yo. And then some other questions. So bottom line is, he told them the question. He said, but you know the answers to that. He said, I don't know. I just blacked out. I could not remember. So the rabbi couldn't understand, yo. So... He goes to bed that night and he prays to Hashem to, you know, reveal to him what happened. So in the dream, Hashem reveals to him through a dream that it was something with the kid's ego, that his ego was so high at that moment that Hashem took away his wisdom. So now the rabbi's thinking, what would make his ego that high? Like, it doesn't make sense. So then the rabbi thought, he said to himself, let me call up this rabbi and ask him a question. So he calls up the rabbi, he goes, can I ask you a question? He goes, when you were testing my student, did you have him like above you, like on a stage or something? They said, oh yeah, yeah, we were using the theater because they were doing construction in the office. <laughs> so the rabbi right away got the point. He was like, ah, now it all makes sense. So they said to him, what makes sense? He didn't know the answers. He goes, are you crazy? He'll school you on Torah. So they said, we don't understand. They said, you don't get it because you elevated him over you was already bragging in his neshama. You see how they look up to me? Subconsciously. So Hashem took away his wisdom so deep, yo. <laughs> Protect me from that, Akadosh Baruch Hu. Wow, 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 wow. And I told you, don't. Yeah, yeah, we all have favorites, right? Good, don't show it. Don't show it because Yaakov showed it and it was a problem. You understand? A huge problem, yo. They stripped Yosef naked, yo. Threw him in a pit to die, yo. They didn't want to kill him direct, yo. So they threw him in a pit. How sick, yo. And who was the one that stripped him naked? It was Shimon. Wow, wow, wow. That's why he kept him back. And threw him in jail, yo. Yo, Moshe Rabbeinu. I still cannot believe that he called Datan and Aviram and they dissed him. And then when he went over there, they dissed him again to his face, yo. I also like when uh, King David was being cursed by uh, Ben Gara. I forgot his name. Shimon Ben Gara. I think something. Shimi Ben Gara. Oh, thank you, Akadosh Baruch Hu. So King David said, "Let him curse." Maybe Hashem wanted it that I hear these words to humble me. I just want to say thank you, Akadosh Baruch Hu, for everything, and I love you forever and for always. Love you, Hashem.